Hello, my name's Kim Eagle. Uh, we're here at uh, ACC 18. I have a couple of guests with me today talking about the clinical trials in the area of heart failure and transplantation today. I have Raghavan Balaga from Ohio State and Monica Colvin from the University of Michigan. We're going to talk to you about three trials that were presented this morning that I think are important. And we'll start with the field of cardio-oncology. We all know that uh, some of the drugs that we use to treat patients with cancer, such as breast cancer, can have cardiotoxic effects. And there were two trials presented here that are relevant to that discussion. And Raghavan, why don't you give us a brief summary of those? I think the uh, first trial is a CC trial where they use carvedilol for protection from cardiotoxicity toxicity due to anthracyclines. And uh, it was a single center trial. It was one of the largest randomized trials. Pre the previous trials were all non-randomized, so this was an important study from the fact that it was randomized. And they randomized the patients to carvedilol uh, with the anthracycline therapy. And it was for um, the anthracycline, the whole chemotherapy regimen was for 20 weeks and they followed up these patients up for 24 weeks, that's six months, and then there will be longer term follow up in two years. Okay. And they found that carvedilol at, at six months was not cardioprotective compared to placebo. But there was a signal suggesting that uh, 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 biomarkers like troponins, diastolic dysfunction, and LV diameter may be abated by carvedilol therapy. So uh, yes, it was kind of neutral at six months, but more to be awaited in, 24, in two years. So if the diastolic function and or the biomarkers are early markers of injury, it's possible that it's showing a possible slight benefit. But we it, need larger trials and longer yeah, follow-up. Yeah, so preventative trials need larger sample sizes. Right. And it's very difficult. And actually, the investigators need to be congratulated because working with the oncologists to prevent cardiotoxicity requires actually randomizing them with their chemotherapy. So it's kind of, it has to be done at the oncology side. Right, uh, right. So it's, uh, it's, it's an important trial it's from that perspective. It's challenging for sure. And there's a second trial, which... So the second trial is, be, uh, is an important trial because it compares anthracyclines with Herceptin or Trastuzumab as, as opposed to with just Trastuzumab alone. And the second trial shows uh, that carvedilol can prevent uh, LV dysfunction uh, in, in possibly when there's a double whammy, when there are two chemotherapeutic right. agents. But with only one chemotherapeutic agent, that is um, trastuzumab, the impact was neutral again. So it was uh, both lisinopril and the beta blocker had a signal of benefit if the patients got two chemotherapeutic drugs for breast cancer. And I think these two trials, which are a total of, what, 600 patients, um, they're, a, they're a beginning, I think, of what we need to see. We need larger trials to really get a sense for if and when these therapies prevent significant cardiotoxicity. But I think we're moving in the right direction. I think so, too. And I think the other, my take on that, as we discussed, is maybe uh, it's a not a one-size-fit-all fit for everybody requiring uh, uh, neurohormonal blockade before the LV dysfunction kicks in. Uh, and, and both the studies are important because they didn't include anyone with hypertension, ischemic heart disease, like in the real world, many right. of the patients have it. And in the, in the CC trial, 50% of the women were premenopausal and 50% were postmenopausal. Right. So they had a good distribution of patients. Uh, right. And yes, it is the largest trial, but for prevention, we may need a bigger sample size. So patient selection will remain an issue, and we need uh, bigger studies that are powered to give us the endpoints that we really want. But yeah. it's a step in the right direction, yeah. I think. So they need to be congratulated for, yeah. for their contributions today. You know, every now and then, there's a huge advance in the area of device support for the failing hearts. And this meeting has one of those trials, and it's called Momentum. So Monica, tell us about that trial. Well, the Momentum 3 trial is a very exciting trial for advanced heart failure. Um, this trial compared the HeartMate 3 device, which is a fully magnetically levitated centrifugal flow pump, to the HeartMate 2, which is an axial flow pump. And the purpose of this study was to determine whether um, the HeartMate 3 could successfully support patients for an extended period of time. 
the uh, primary endpoint in this trial was a composite of um, disabling stroke or reoperation due to removal mm -hmm. or uh, re uh, replacement of the pump. As far as the primary endpoint, 77% um, of the patients in the HeartMate 3 arm achieved the, the primary endpoint. That is freedom from disabling stroke or uh, uh, reoperation due to removal or replacement of the device compared to 56% of the patients in the HeartMate 2 arm. Other um, endpoints that were evaluated included stroke, bleeding, um, infection, and um, I think the, the, those were the major endpoints. And, and it looked like stroke was lower, right? Yes, so there was no significant difference in disabling stroke, but when you look at the occurrence of any stro stroke of any severity, there was a statistically significant uh, difference in the, the rate of stroke in the heart meet three arm. So the exciting thing about, uh, I don't even know how you put all the words together, but the, the, the <laughs> levitation, presumably the, the mechanism of that lowers the risk of stroke, uh, and we saw that in this trial. So here's a major advance with improved outcome and better safety profile for a dreaded complication. Absolutely, I think the thrombotic complications have been a major limitation to the success of these devices. And what we saw in the trial is that there were three patients in the heart mate three arm who were reoperated for um, reoperated in general, compared to 30 in the heart mate two arm. Wow. Two thirds of those who were uh, who had reoperation were due to thrombotic complications. Right. So I think uh, today we've talked about three trials. The area of cardio-oncology continues to evolve. We're beginning to see larger trials that will inform us about preventing cardiotoxicity. Momentum three, as discussed by Monica, this is a landmark, um, landmark trial. It's going to change practice right away. And I want to thank you both for uh, joining me today at ACC 18. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.